Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, so now we are officially recording. I think this is week 13 of my new member orientation webinar uh, Q&A. At the end, I do a Q&A every single week. Uh, we already kind of talked about Slack and everything, but now I just want to open this up to questions, guys, and kind of free talk. Uh, if you are a member, obviously write out your questions here and we can talk about some cool things or I could talk or I can just go on a rant on a bunch of cool things, which I think or what I'm looking at, why I didn't touch this or why I touched this or this and that. But uh, here's a chance to kind of get your questions out. If you are a new member, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, and let's talk about some things. Let's talk about charting and all my chicken scratch that I had right here. So I'll give you guys a minute. Does anybody have some questions? Write them out right now. If not, I'll just start talking about some stuff. I am so excited about this OCGN, man. This is what we needed, guys. This is the runner that we needed. I really, really hope this continues. You have no idea. Go to fucking $4 for all I care, man. I am not short this position. I have no intention of shorting. This market has been so freaking dead that we need a runner to light up the fire. So when you're in a dead market, guys, and trust me, I've learned this so many times for the last six years, when you're in a market where every single day that this is the best thing you're going to get, you know, ask her yesterday, this piece of crap company that is just basically nothing goes nowhere, dies out the gate. Um, you're going to, you're going to get comfy. You know, you're going to get comfy shorting these things and having leniency with what's called inner lines, right? So you're going to have like really kind of lazy trading to be honest. And then something like OCGN is going to come around. You're going to keep adding when it rips against you. And then this is going to be the runner that explodes your freaking week or knocks out your month of gains because you are so used to and kind of coddled like a baby on a dead market and being able to hit inner lines or chase entries because it, things fade and nothing really runs. Well, now people are not getting away with that because that's what OCGN did. So as you guys can see, and this is actually one of the biggest reasons why I did not short it today. And let's go into why. Watch list. I was right on par with Alex on this. This will likely be the hot chick of the day. Not only did it have SSR, it was a low float. It's day one, and we have been needing a runner to light up the small cap market. I knew that this did not have much meat on the bone. So when you see something like this, guys, uh, let me remove this. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you have a, like, I hate stocks like this, right? I hate stocks like this. So, like, let's go to the five-year. This is just, let me take away VWAP. Uh, remove all studies. So this is the daily chart, guys. This is so, this is too beaten down in my opinion, like literally way too beaten down. Um, let me try to expand this. Uh, we could talk about this. In, uh, you know what? Here, hold on. If I'm going to talk about a specific ticker, I might as well just make it one. So one sec, let me do this for you. So OCGN, right? Uh, or yeah, yeah, OCGN. Dude, this is... This, this is too beaten down. I hate this level ass action. See this dude where you can literally draw a line. This is a really good lesson for new traders. I like charts where they're literally coming down and coming down, but there's pops. There's, this is fucking, dude, this is a flat line. This is a fucking dead stock. So what happens when this actually shows some traction? It's not, it's, it's not like you're shorting into like a little run like that. It's just, dude, it's been dead for, it's been flatlined for a while. So when I see stocks like this, I am never excited to short them because they're just too beaten down. They're, they need a day like this. So this is a really key um, kind of way to kind of know and go, going forward. I knew that this could happen. You know, I didn't, I didn't, if I was, if I knew a hundred percent, I'd be rich on a private island, but I, I didn't know, but I know that there's the chance because this is the action I avoid. 
So not only did I not like the daily, it's been beaten down for a couple days right before, which again, add that to the two beaten down list. And second, now that it's up pre-market, what is it up, man? 140 to 170, dude, in a dead market, that, that's nothing, bro. That's no meat on the bone. So this doesn't entice me whatsoever, not even with these said death candles. This is just a non-play for me. And I'm so glad I, invo uh, I avoided it because I'm more of a conviction player. So I don't like to scalp. I like to get it at a good average and potentially even swing it. And I would have gotten smoked had I played this. And I knew that that was the possibility, specifically being SSR. It's beaten down in the daily. It's got SSR. Uh, it's a low float day runner. And everybody, everybody is on the lookout for where is that runner that's going to come and blast shorts out of their water and bring volume with it. Well, look where we are. Boom. It's, it's, it's starting to be here. And I hope to God this is it. Um, let me go back to me, remember? So I can see your questions. Uh, okay, so let, now let, that was that was OCGN. So now I'm just watching. I'm gonna give this a couple days. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch this short until tomorrow. This is look at this. This is all front side now. This is just a pure front side move. Uh, I have no interest in this. Higher low, higher low, higher low. Uh, I can put. Let me put. Yep, there's VWAP. It's way down there. I'm not looking towards this. Had this broken down and death slammed down here earlier, then yeah, I may have touched it. But again, man, this is just let it do its thing. Every dog needs its day in the sun, right? And you know, in a dead market, it needs this. So just let it do its thing. Now, Azure was day two. <clears throat> uh, so let me let me pull up that bit. Azure was day two. Now, what was your question, bottom fishing? Azure, when it gaps down for your low hanger play, uh, do you still want high? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the higher for the red to green play. So Here's the thing, brother. I am always looking for the fantasy order. I have just come to a point in my trading where it's almost retired trading that I hit a lot harder than I used to two or three days a week. But I want perfect entries and I want perfect averages. So, you know, a great strategy on day twos is when a stock gaps down, this gap down a little less than I would like. Uh, but to answer your question, had this gap down to like way down here, then made its journey to red to green, then yes, I would have hit it at red to green. But if it's kind of just a non-existent gap, I mean, this did gap, but not like I want to see, then I'm going to wait for a real fantasy order and where all the tops are. So from day one, I am looking at, at areas, tops, top, top, um, you know, that's a top, this is a pertinent top, this is a pertinent top. I'm looking for this area to scale. I'm, I don't want any part of all this. I just really don't because it's just too close to home. Again, you want room to come down. So I just want it in this area. That's how I draw out my, my, previous, my like low hangers. So again, could you hit red to green all day with a tight stop? Sure. But I like fantasy, fantasy perfect orders and I want to scale into all these fail zones from day one where it conforms to the chart. Um, and if I was being really, really uh, conservative, I'd start there. So, um, but I like to sometimes give myself some leniency if I feel the stock is crap. So, you know, it, that's really, you know, so, you know, it is what it is, man. That's all depending on your play style, uh, bottom fishing. But yeah, I mean, it, I like a strong gap either way, brother. I like a strong gap down so that it's a long ass journey to red to green. This was not a strong, strong gap down or I want a strong gap up so where I could, you know, do the previous day high, you know, scale up to the previous day high. So I hope that's clear, man. I, um, I'm probably not the best at explaining charting, but I try my best. So I, I hope that's really clear as much as I can say. But yeah, gap downs are very, um, very, very indicative of where I'm going to hit it on a day two. And if I miss, I miss. It's not a big deal, man. It's like I said, when it gets to your desired entries, you hit two or three times harder than you normally do, or at least that's what I do. And then you can go from there. Uh, let me put my, how do I put VWAP on here again? Uh, yeah. So, you know, let this do its thing, short sellers. Don't rush into this right now. This was just kind of a, eh, I didn't see much of a range in this. It had some range, but not as much as I'd want. Uh, and then RTTR, I don't trade anything under a dollar. But again, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. RTTR, why do we talk about lines? Why do we talk about tops? Why do we talk about conform levels? So when you see a random runner, guys, hit your screens. Um, <clears throat> I wrote these earlier in the start of the webinar. When you see a stock running just randomly, like if this was all you saw, right, today, you'd be like, it's got no pre-market data, like 
where's a good level to hit it, right? You want to scroll back. So this is a five day chart. You want to, this was yesterday and this is the day before. You want to scroll back and see where are the tops, man? Where are the fantasy orders? Again, a fantasy order is an ideal level and a very extreme psychological resistance point that a lot of people are gonna see, right? This is a major topping section, whatever you wanna call that. This is another top. So I like to hit in levels like this, you know, like right here, and if I was being unbelievably conservative, you just wait for this, right? Like you wait for kind of like the base of the top to the top of the top. And then you can scale that zone and look where it made it. It did make it within these levels. So this is just a great way to stay patient, sit on hands and never get ultra squeezed if you wait for these levels. Sure, will it break this level every now and then, nine, one time out of 10? Sure, of course it will. And then you have a hard stop and then you cut your position. But again, if you just waited for these, you're gonna have perfect fucking averages. I mean, look, dude, say that's all you got on. Say you got a starter, but dude, you have such a good average. You could literally write it to here. Again, there's not much range in this play. That's, that's why I don't like under $1 stocks, but it is what it is, man. It's just something to learn from. It's just, again, it is price action. And, you know, when people hate on lines, it's like, dude, how do you hate on lines? It's the only way to read a chart. Are you kidding me? Lines and tops is what you pay attention to. Tops, tops, tops. Where are the resistance points? Uh, keeping it simple, baby. Keep it simple. Anytime you start to over... The, what's up, Mize? Anytime anybody... Uh, Mize, myself, Alex, you know, bottom fishing, Tom, 1994. I don't care who you are. If you are scratching your head and not understanding and, and trying to debate again and again, always like, should I be a filings master? Should I be a technical master? I don't understand. People are, ex you know, putting Excel spreadsheets together and, and inputting every portion of data, whether it's open and closed price. And I'm racking my brain. I can't figure this out. Dude, take a minute. Do you know the basics of charting? I'm telling you right now. Uh, stock trading is not an easy profession. We talk about this a lot. In fact, we've made this kind of very famous. Stock trading is not easy. I'm not here to bullshit you and say you're going to turn $4,000 into 10 million billion gajillion dollars. But what it is, guys, is there are very simplified methods to understand where a good entry would be or where a good starter or where a good exit or where to put your hard stops are because the charts will tell you something. I mean, look at this. There's no, oh, I'll, uh, sorry, I'll pull it up here. I keep forgetting. Uh, there's no coincidence that this stock did what this did. If you've been around long enough to know about the runner out of a dead market, yeah, sure. Again, guys, pay attention to fucking volume. Look, I can't stress this highly enough. Where's the volume on this chart? Volume. De decent move. Volume comes back in. Oh, shit. Big fucking squeeze. Yeah, no shit. Because there's no demand here. It's not going to just fucking rip faces off right here. Nobody's buying this shit. But volume starts to trickle back in. And then guess what? You get a massive move. So if you are short from the morning right here and you're riding it all day, where should you start to look to exit? If this thing does higher lows, higher lows, comes through VWAP and has volume behind it. So again, guys, like the guys that are always trying to overthink trading, stop overthinking. Learn the basics. How to read volume time of day trading, uh, you know, after 1030, we talk about the zombie hour. So, you know, here's a, here, every day it's 730. Well, 1030, you know, I go by Pacific standard time because I live in LA. This is zombie time. Don't be short after this time and you'll make a lot more money. It's just, it's simple rules, man. Trading is simple, bro. It's just, it's just not easy, but it is simple. It is simple. There's a very finite number of plays. There's a finite number of strategies and there's a finite number of rules that you should be sticking to on day ones. Are you shorting, you know, low hangers, death lines, and on day ones, are you buying first bounces? And on day twos, are you not buying and hitting fantasy orders, maybe red, green, or previous high day, depending on the gap? That's a simple structure to follow. Make sense? It's very simplified. So, you know, I'm speaking to the non-members right now. If you do not know anything that I just talked about, you need a community behind you, or you will burn thousands, tens of thousands, and probably hundreds of thousands like many traders do. And I get sob stories left and right of members before joining MIC. Like, dude, if I had only joined your simple methods or your simple video library or your simple curriculum, it's very simplified for any trader of any level could have saved you your entire account, man. So, you know, when you try to do this career on your own, which, you know, before resources like MIC, all of us had to do, 
I had to do, you know, six years ago, I lost a lot of unnecessary money, man. If I would have had someone like me or Alex or Joe to get on the phone with or do these webinars and ask questions, bro, I would have saved a fortune. So you need the resource of the community behind you and perspectives and guys who've been doing it a while and know how price action works or at least how to navigate the water. So, you know, for anybody that's on the fence of joining MIC, if you learn one thing today already, how much do you think you'll learn if you actually just join? So <laughs> I'm not here to be a total salesman. I'm just trying to give you a good example. Um, Corey, what's up, buddy? Should we only look for tops as resistance or broken support as well? Um, you know, again, man, it just depends on what on which side you're playing. I'm a short bias trader. I'm just looking for resistance levels or a death line break specifically. So, you know, uh, if I, if, you know, this stock pre-market, where am I looking at a death line play? I'd say a death line would be arguably about right there, about right there, the 150 half dollar mark. And then um, uh, right here, it just seems like I don't like these wicks. I don't care about these wicks. The volume's right here. It's, it's above this level. So if it breaks this level, it's going to be a short. You see what I'm saying? So um, with broken supports, there's a ton of supports. Does that make sense? There's a ton of supports. I don't like that level of trading. Uh, Corey, I like a backside move. It has to be guaranteed backside. I don't short frontside. So I'm not looking at support breaks here and shorting this. If this breaks, look, if this breaks this level right here, which is a neckline, and, and ideally what you should wait for if you are going to attack this at all if it does break this level and you know people are shorting, this is still a front side move. So I'm just not interested in that, but that's a support break. Does that make sense? Like right here to right here, that's a support zone. I'm, I'm still, I don't give a shit. I need this down here under death lines or a day two low hanger. Why? Because your success rate is going to be 90, 80 to 90% if you just waited for all those versus waiting for something like this it reclaims, volume comes in, rips your face off, fuck you candle through support, which is now resistance, and then keeps going. Does that make sense? So um, I look for tops within backside. This is not exactly a super backside move, but again, where are the tops? You know, the top, it, sorry. Um, God damn it, I keep forgetting to make it bigger. <laughs> but again, like where are the levels you want to hit on something like this? Well, you want to hit on the fail zone. So right here and right here, as these are the tops. So then if you draw your lines for that, these were day, these were day two lines or something I drew, but if you were to draw your lines, these that's the area to scale. Does that make sense? That's the area you want to scale. So unless it hits there, if it just goes right here and it drops, you miss it, dude. You fucking miss it. So the point is, man, is like, Look, oh, oh, dude, I said this recently to a guy on a phone call, and like I even stunned myself at how brilliant I thought it was, and I don't usually do that, but I did want to pat myself on the back. Let me introduce you to what real trading is, and it's very simple in a couple sentences. The difference between a new trader and a tr veteran trader, just a guy who's been doing it for so long, is, hey, thanks, Sir Anthony. Uh, I appreciate that, buddy. Oh, sick, dude, see you in Vegas. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, is, is the thing that's gonna separate a new trader from a veteran trader, guys, is one thing. It is, well, it's two things, but it's really one thing. It's patience and discipline. When I see new traders going, hey, Tosh, I, should I change up my strategies because the markets are changing? No. The market sentiment is maybe dead this week or running through the FISA hex next week. I don't give a shit. You do not change your process. You change your patience. Let me make this very clear. Let me make this very clear. You do not change your process that makes you money depending on the market conditions. You change your patience. If someone wants to debate me on that, I would totally get on the phone and we can have a total talk about it as I respect everyone's opinions, but after trading for six years, it is not in changing what you do as a trader, it is changing the level of entry. So now, if there is a runner finally, you are now going to have to wait longer. The market sentiment is coming back or chasers are flush with cash. So let me make this clear. Are you hitting inner lines right here or are you hitting outer lines? That is patience. Does that make sense? So now you're gonna to have to get much better entries and the reason why you don't change your process is because I don't give a shit if we're in a market 
where there's 10,000 OCGNs and they're all running through the roof, through the roof, through the roof. I don't trade anything but three setups. Something with pre-market overhead, like usually this in the morning with more meat, pre-market overhead into resistance in the tops, a broken death line play, or a day two low hanger around the red to green or the previous high day, depending on the gap. That is a process. I have three major strategies that I play as a trader. Depending on where it is or the last price is on the chart is dependent upon my patience of waiting for these things. Does that make sense? I am not touching this for one second today because this is not my process. I make money on those three, on those setups that I just told you. I am not trying to guess tops here. I'm not trying to guess a neckline break. This will be arguably a day two low hanger tomorrow, in which case I will pay attention to the gap down or up and then play the levels depending on the gap. That is a process. The only thing that is changing is my patience. Make sense? All right, let's move on. Uh, Mark, Mark Carter, I can notice volume fading but it seems kind of hard for me to see the volume coming in. It, you, uh, it usually just, from my opinion, just spikes up from a large candle. Is there any way to see volume come in? Yeah, man. I mean, just do, just literally just pay attention to these. These are the volume bars, man. You just want to obviously like, look, so there's two things to pay attention to uh, aggressively if something is going to continue up, right? Is obviously these consolidation points, boom. This is a support area. This is a support area. Uh, and you can draw exact lines if you want, but I'm just going to make it, I'm going to try to make it really easy for people to understand. Uh, so pay attention to these. If these are being held and at least the same amount of volume levels or more is going up, this is most likely just going to fucking continue going up. Am I right? These are support levels. These are consolidation points. There's a lot of volume to break through or break through on the upside. So, you know, if this breaks down, then breaks right back through, you know, the support now became resistance, it broke through, but the whole point is, is if you want to draw lines, you know, it's got to convincingly break these levels, and then you can see a volume fade off. Now, volume is fading off right here, right? But pay attention. So, ah, I always forget. Okay, so, now that it's a bigger chart, Watch this. This is why paying attention to volume and these consolidation points are so key. And you can draw the lines at the bases of the candles, right? Like I, I would probably draw it exactly right there. I don't like the wicks. I like uh, the bases. So maybe you're right. If I wanted to get exact, oops, uh, sorry, right there. Um, that's what I paid. I don't care about wicks. You know, I really don't because wicks are just, uh, they're panic. That's all the wick is, is just panic uh, to the sell or panic to the long. But pay attention here, bro. So check this big move out and then volume tapered off, but it had no indication of breaking this consolidation point, and then boom, blast off, and now it's totally at a new high of day. So, you know, a smart kind of way to play, in my opinion, on the long side, is to wait for it to test and hold these levels a couple times on the three-minute chart, and then long somewhere around here with a hard stop under this break. And then pay attention to volume. If it just completely fit, tapers off and looks like this again at Ghost Town, you know, let me just put that, oh, Hold on, I'll have to redraw it. Um, but look at the ghost town of demand. This is a ghost town, bro. And this is why it fucking faded for so long. You know, and it just tater and did nothing or a little can, a little can, a little. Like, it was grinding. These are big moves. These are big, fluid, fluid, fluid moves based on the volume that starts a catalyst kind of reaction of buying. I hope that's clear, man. I, I, I don't know how clear my teaching is, but I hope that's clear. Um, let's see, uh, Mario, what's up, buddy? Hey, one of our, one of our new dudes saw you at San Jose, man. Mario signed up, uh, after the San Jose meetup. Thanks for believing in us, buddy. Uh, what is the best way to scale in on these tops? Also, what is the best way to scale if you're trading with a 10K account? Um, depending on whether you are PDT, brother, that's a whole nother case. If you have a brokerage, uh, that, um, that can, you know, just allow you to scale as much as you want, or you're not under PDT then here's what I like to do. So um, where's a good example, right? Like, so um, day two asser. Well, I showed it before, but I'll show it again. Here's what I pay attention to. Top, top, top. Uh, this is arguably like just kind of the same level, but top. 
So where do I want a perfect order on this for myself personally? This is just my style. I think the volume is very pertinent right there through about right here. So see this open gap. This is now where I want my scales. So any, I would scale every 10 cents into this with a stop out and a hard stop right here. So this would be my scale zone. So it's just up to you. You may only get a starter. You may get ads. You may get full size, depending on your scale. This is where you back test and you find out how scaling works for you. But if it goes anywhere in this level, I'm going to start getting interested. I'm going to start going in and adding about every 10 cents because this is such a long move, especially from a gap down that I just don't believe that it's going to make it past these lines that I drew. And if it did, I got a hard stop in place. Very, very simple very structured, very detailed. I have certain levels depending on where the price action is, and that's that. Uh, God, they're doing construction around my place right now. If you guys can hear all those guys yelling. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, thank you, Sir Anthony. Hey, Tosh, can you give one more example on low-hanging fruit, thanks? Uh, I mean, I can, but what, I can't remember. Give me, give me a ticker that ran recently that was a good low-hanger, or uh, maybe I can go to the watch list. Uh, dude, I literally forget everything when the market closes. I'm like, I, I freaking unplug like the matrix. What was a low hanger recently that was not bad? Uh, da, 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 da. Was Zello? I think Zello was, right? Yeah, Zello was one. Zello was one. So check this. This was, this was okay. So the, uh, let me pull it up. One sec. <laughs> Man, I'm tired. Tired today, tired, tired, tired. Going nonstop, baby. Now we gotta go to Vegas and kick ass and meet you guys and have fun, man. I can't wait to network with traders, get to see my buddy Inefficient Market. If by any chance he's listening to this, Nico, I miss you, dude. I'll see you Friday or Saturday, that'd be fucking awesome. So um, let's see, so I don't know why I have these lines drawn here. That was not my orders for day two, that's way too unrealistic. So what I ideally usually want on something like this Here's a day two low hanger, right? Get smoke day one. Now, of course, you can go to the tops of these, but that's kind of crazy because this is a major consolidation area. So I would do like right here and then bring it down towards like maybe the middle ground. I usually do it within the middle of these as see how the sideways action, when you see a whole day of sideways action, this is where most of the volume is. And ideally, in my opinion, it's just kind of floating around in some of its stuff. So I like to scale based on a dollar amount sometimes. So, you know, I will usually risk 20 cents. So I'd say if this was 137, we'll just, we'll just say, we'll just say right here because the whole and a half dollar, if you were to break this, it'd probably keep going. So this is my scale zone. Again, everybody's different on these, but again, this is just how I do things. I like to consolidate. See how this is like, watch this. Let me, let me try to make this as clear as I can. This is a consolidation area, how it's just kind of bah, 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 like almost channel trading. There's a lot of volume in there to kind of come out. So this would be the scale zone. If it breaches here at any point, I think that people will want to get out and break even on their money. And then it will trail off into a downward spiral, which it did, which it did. So just, you know, as a call, I'm totally who this right now. I can't remember if I even traded this, but but I'm saying this is what I normally do. So this is like my skill zone. And then I'd scale all the way up between the lines. So you wanna give yourself bullets based on if you're getting the whole move or as if it were to rip against you the whole move, meaning up to 150 before coming down. So don't throw full size right here just because it breaks the line. Um, if you play like me, you know, which is very specific, I'm getting in, getting in, getting in, getting in, and then boom, I'm gonna write it down. So, and cover the first wash. So that's a good example of another day too. <clears throat> Uh, Corey, last question. Could you go over the question I sent you in PM? Or, oh, sure. <laughs> uh, hey, Tosh, looking forward to the webinar. I'm actually going to watch it in Orlando. Oh, sick, dude. What's up? Uh, quick question. Why wasn't OCGN a good short around 155? So you're asking from right here to and 170. It's a great question. It's a great freaking question, especially after it started to show some topping action in 170. Well, while I already kind of went through this earlier, Corey, is uh, look, man, if you wanted to short this, you can. You can literally. So hold on. You totally can. I don't touch sort of stuff like this, and I'll and I'll. Oh, oh, CGM. 
I don't, and I'll tell you why. Because remember, again, I'm looking at a multitude of factors. The daily chart is too flatlined for me. I think it's too beaten down. That was number one. It's SSR. It's a low flow. It's day one from a dead market. So in a normal circumstance, and there's no meat. This is just not enough meat. This could easily have gotten a pumper involved and just continue, 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 continue. This could have been the morning hope if the right pumper got involved and this really took traction, but it got it later. So, you know, again, if you are going to short, yes, you are right. Look at the previous top. So never, never hit the inner lines here, in my opinion, because this isn't a death line break. So don't hit these inner lines, man. Wait for it to at least test the previous topping action, which is right here, right? Boom. So as you can see, if you were to kind of hit the scale area, which was right here, in my opinion, you would have nailed it. You would have nailed it. But I just don't take chances. There was a multitude of reasons why I personally didn't like this. Uh, so that's why I didn't touch it. But again, man, to each his own. So I would have only paid attention to a death line break had this had meat on the bone and or if this was already overextended enough with more overhead pre-market, I would have hit the previous top. But again, it's all up to you, brother. It's all up to you, man. Those are just my comfort levels. So yeah, you can short it right there with a tight stop just in case you get smoked. For sure. Yeah, I got you teach well. Oh, thanks, Mark. Good. I'm, I'm glad I teach well, man. I hope I do. <laughs> See, now we're getting some serious topping action on OCGN. So check this. Let's go live. Let's go live. This is beautiful. I, I mean, it's beautiful for a short at these levels. So now do the bow method. Now that it's breaking down, where's the reshort? Right here. You don't chase. Now, here's a short. You could do a short within these levels with a tight stop above high of day. This is what's called wait for a stock to top and then retest levels. This is just strictly playing lines and resistance. Actually, I'd raise that just a little bit towards the base of the candles, maybe right there. That is not a bad entry for a short. Again, it's still front side. So this is why I don't touch stuff like this. But Bao, you know, can get a really nice scalp if this retests and then comes down real quick. You cover 10, 20 cents, pad the wallet all day. I, I wish, I wish this would just continue to $5 so we can really pour some gasoline on a slow market. But again, it is what it is. So if you wanted to see a short here, I just, I don't love the idea of chasing weakness in front side. I would wait for the reshort. But again, it's just up to you, man. This is why we say you need to backtest your style of shorting. You need to backtest your style of longing. Everybody can make money in every way of trading, but you've got to find what works for you. There's a million ways to make money, bro. There's a million ways. But um, yes, this is totally front side. Dude, this is 100% front side. No, there's barely any longs underwater. These are the only longs underwater right now, right? Like pretty much this. And they're not, so the guys from Chase are right. All this is being supported, you know, unless you want to incorporate, yes, these days and the daily chart, but I'm talking about strictly intraday. This is technically a front side move for sure. Uh, I was way too high on Zella. It makes more sense now. Yeah, yeah, man, on it, on Zella, the um, one I was talking about earlier, um, when it has a lot of sideways action like this from right here to right here, you know, pay attention to that. So if it gaps down, you could, you could theoretically – uh, short into this and then go from line to line if it breaks this then go to the other tops you know what i mean which are oops, which are like right here so top 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 uh if this you know had a nice gap down then play back into these consolidation uh top levels holy shit man i feel like i gave you guys like ten thousand secret sauces today and you're not even a member of mic or you are a member <laughs> i went over a lot man I feel like, uh, as you guys can see, how much freaking value we had at MIC. Just teach you, hold you by the hand, just do whatever we can. Nice, thanks, buddy. Uh, we're just here to guide you, man. I want you to learn. Uh, if you're not a member, reach out to me. Here, let me let me kind of stop the charting now. It's a, I'm getting a little crazy with this, man. It's like, it's like you got to join to get some of this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, MU, no problem, buddy. So, guys, here's uh, here's how to contact us. Uh, oh, you know what? Really quick, really quick, really quick. Before I, before I kind of close up the charting, guys, let, let me make very clear. If you guys aren't using hard stops, man, you have to. You, you fucking have to. I, I, look, I don't care whether you're a member or not a member. I'm speaking to everybody. You need hard stops in your trading, man. You need to save your money. So one of the reasons why I treaded water for the first two and a half, three years of my career is because, guys, here's what I would do. 
I'd be right for 30 days straight, dead market, hot market, didn't matter. But here's what I would do. And here's what a lot of you do, and you need to be careful. You have a good short, you chase lows, whatever, you got a good average right here technically. And then the one runner comes along on the 31st day and wipes out your whole months of gains because here's what happens. You don't have a hard stop in for right here. And you say, I'm going to give it a mental stop. I'm going to break, you know, you're coming down here. Maybe it's trading right here. You're like, man, I'm really in the money. I'm going to swing this fucking thing. I'm doing great. Now it comes back up. It comes back up, comes back up. And then you go, I don't have a hard stop in. So it's going to automate it for me, right? I have a mental stop in. Oh shit. It broke through. Okay. I'm going to give it five more cents. Boom, boom, boom. Like you just do, you just, all this could have been avoided. And then you don't take the mother of all losses because your dumbass didn't put a hard stop like I did my dumbass for the first two or three years. My point is, is protect yourself, man. Play three to one ratio shorts or longs, put a hard stop in, protect yourself. And guys, I swear to God, the sky's the fucking limit, man. You will make money if you really commit and learn price action and commit to this game. But you need to put your money in protection as well. So I just can never speak more highly on hard stops and how much you need them in your trading. So please, dear God, if you're a member, not a member, and you don't use them, just start looking into them, man. I want you guys to stay safe out there. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, glad you're getting value from this, man. That's what that's what matters to me, man. That's really important. That's really important to me. I, I want you guys to learn, man. I really do. I I wish to. Dear God, I would have had, you know, webinars and access to guys like us and, you know, six years ago in MIC, man. It's just, I don't like hearing that people lose their hard-earned money. And even 18-year-old kids, bro, I'm 29. I'm an adult. I'm a man. It's like, bro, 18 and 19-year-old children are losing their life savings or fucking college funds because they don't go to college because their parents let them be stupid. And and put it in the market and they didn't have a community and they didn't know what they were doing. So again, man, I'm, I'm here for those guys, man. I'm here to make sure those guys don't lose all their hard earned money. man. And it's like the market can cause a lot of beautiful things in your life. Or if you're un, you know, if you just don't know what you're doing, man, it can be devastating. So, you know, I've seen it all, man. I've seen it all. So protect yourself. Um, guys, if you want to sign up right now, we are raising prices soon. This is totally the time to get grandfathered in the pricing. Twitter, My Investing Club, uh, IG, My Investing Club, Instagram, Alex Tamiz, ET09, Twitter, uh, and IG. Uh, here's Bows, Modern Rock, Modern Rock. Uh, you can reach me at Tosh at MyInvestingClub.com. Uh, my Twitter is tbradley90. My Instagram handle is tbradley90 uh, underscore trader. Don't be shy, guys. Schedule a call with us today. I will get on the phone with you guys um, once this freaking guy stops sawing wood in my ear. Uh, <laughs> My neighborhood, man, they're freaking, uh, they're doing a bunch of work. So it is what it is, but, uh, reach out to us guys. I swear to God, we're here for you. Uh, we will, we'll take care of your needs, man. I hope, uh, I hope you guys got all your questions answered. Uh, Tom, thanks for showing up again, man. Great explanation on the levels of resistance lines. Yeah, buddy. You guys got to put in the time, man. How bad do you want it? You guys got to keep showing up man. I see the same faces in here every week. Dude, I see bottom fishing. I see Mize. I see Tom. These guys want it, man. These guys are hungry. Armando's in here every week, dude. You guys are watching the videos. You guys are watching our webinars. You guys are coming to the meetups. Put in the time, guys. You will learn how to trade. I promise you. You will learn how to trade. Um, whether you make money or not or size appropriately or do that, that's up to you, man. That's, that's based on you. You know, watch our videos. We have a video on everything, how to protect, how to size, how to get started, but um, please use our resources at MIC if you are a member. And if you're not, reach out to me and we'll get you started. I'll get on a call with you and walk you through it and give you your options. Um, toodaloo, I'm out of here. I'm freaking winded. I'm tired as hell. <laughs> yes, yes. I like the hunger, buddy. I want this shit, man. MIC has helped me see my flaws in trading and personality. Yes, trading will show you so much of your personality, even in your real life, that you didn't even know about. So, Again, man, there are many times where I found out I'm a badass, and many times I found out I'm a total pussy in some regards. So again, man, you this will put a mirror up to your face and tell you how to progress uh, as a trader and also as a person. So again, guys, if you are having trouble in your trading, um, it can be fixed, but you got to tweak it. You got to tweak it. So you got to find these tweaks that will help you. Um, you know, whether you're bag holding positions that are losing, whether you're taking paper cut every day, whether you're not doing the patience for 
fantasy orders and outer lines or hitting the right side of the trend, um, you guys need to just tweak your style. So, and then once you really know what you're doing and you have a process, again, remember, once you have a process, it's not about changing your process, it's about changing your patience. I'll leave you with that. Guys, you've been awesome. Uh, until next week. See you guys. Thank you. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.